Welcome to What's a Preacher to Do, a series of brief interviews sponsored by the Perkins Center for Preaching Excellence at SMU to help preachers in this kind of double pandemic of COVID and racism navigate the turbulent waters. Today, our guest is Dr. Sally Brown, Elizabeth Engel, Associate Professor of Preaching and Worship at Princeton Theological Seminary. She is an ordained Presbyterian minister, author of several very helpful works that helped us to uh, as she says it, the preacher as the interpreter of word and world. And uh, she also has years of pastoral experience and a deep commitment to working with pastors in the trenches. We have also been friends for, for more years than either of us would probably want to acknowledge. <laughs> but it's so wonderful to, uh, to have you, friend and colleague, to uh, be with us today. And so um, my question is, uh, what is a key insight from your recent research for preachers these days? Well, thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Um, one of the things I've noticed is what an abundance of material is out there. Just a tip to all preachers who want to keep learning. Every kind of church and every kind of setting of every size is now posting uh, their sermons in video. And you can go, say, to a city that's been an epicenter for both COVID and for um, the out outcry for racial justice and go see what preachers uh, representing different uh, racial and ethnic contexts are saying um, in those contexts. And that's been so instructive for me um, as a teacher and as a preacher. And there are two things I'd like to talk about. One of them, um, my favorite topic, I think, in all of my work, is uh, the power of metaphor to create a, a space that different people can inhabit coming out of different experiences. and um, tying together the pastoral and the prophetic obligation of preaching has been a challenge for every preacher, I think. And um, do, you, do you go down one road? Do you go down another road? It's interesting uh, for me to see how metaphor has created a hospitable space for both, where people can enter in. I'll, I'll talk about that for a few minutes. And also I've noticed the power of testimony. Um, preachers just coming to the pulpit and saying, I'm really tired. Or I'm I'm ready for this to be over, and just coming coming from the gut, and uh, speaking of their own experience as uh, working preachers and parents and caretakers of elderly parents and all of that, um, as that's created a kind of a bond of authenticity where there's the, in that move that preacher seems to embrace mm -hmm. and and mirror the ex experience of the listener. So a couple things, okay, so. Um, I'll just give you some examples of metaphors that have stuck with me. That'd be great. Um, of all the sermons that I've heard, and there are many, many more. Um, You've been writing an article, haven't you, about? Uh, yes, I did. I wrote an article um, for a South African journal, Acta Theologica. The special um, section of that journal won't come out until December. Um, it and the articles are in review, but I, I did write on um, what does it look like to preach um, at the convergence of two viral threats, mm. um, COVID and um, systemic racism. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing to keep in mind is that COVID has its, its public policy side, right. and justice has its, um, its pastoral side. Um, there, those, don't, those don't fit in different compartments. So for example, one pastor who on um, Pentecost Sunday faced into the camera, this was not the sermon, um, the sermon um, moved on later with this metaphor. He said, church, we are in a storm. Hmm. He was preaching um, at the edge of a city that had been literally on fire the previous night. Um, he's, he's preaching to people who live in the city. He's preaching to a multicultural congregation. He has um, many people of color um, as well as um, white in the congregation. And some of them were, you know, up half the night uh, listening to the hot helicopters circle. And uh, the, the city is still smoking on Pentecost morning. Church, we are in a storm. And um, that, that uh, I, I won't say so much an image, I think metaphors create spaces, not images. They create a set of dynamics. And someone who is um, 
uh, dealing with the grief of a, a loss of a loved one, they're in a storm. Um, and those who are just enraged um, by what's happened so recently, um, the George Floyd death, are in a storm. So it's, it's embracing pastorally, prophetically. Um, uh, one preacher dwelt on Jonah for several weeks running. He says this is like being swallowed by a whale. Wow. Um, what's it like to be in the belly of a fish, a place where you can't breathe? Um, and um, uh, the image of captives uh, longing for release, mm -hmm. um, ourselves, uh, those who may be other than ourselves, who in different ways are longing for re release, the release of um, COVID patients who made it out of the ICU. Um, the release of captives is a powerful one. Um, another preacher preached a wonderful sermon on staying home as an act of love and that God is, God is leading us home. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, uh, on, in a sermon on racism, um, it's like a song you don't especially like, but you can't get it out of your head and you find yourself humming it when you didn't know you were. Oh, wow. That's cool. um, and, was, and that was such an interesting metaphor for the embeddedness of racism. It occurs to me that, um, that the use of metaphor and the use of testimony are very biblical models of preaching, aren't they? Yeah. Um, so in so many ways, um, I think that the, you know, Jesus as preacher um, is, is such a clue for our own um, pastoral and prophetic uh, mm -hmm. preaching. Well, thank you so much for these insights. I would love to, I wish we could talk for, for hours on this because uh, it's so, um, so rich when you think about uniting the pastoral and the prophetic by these means of metaphor and, uh, and testimony. Uh, and so uh, when, we, when we come to um, uh, putting some of your work and some information about you on the website, can we include how to find this article that you've worked on? Um, yeah, as soon as, soon as I know, uh, it's going to be Acta Theologica of uh, December 20, and, and it's a special section. It's um, published by the University of the Free State okay. in South Africa, so there, it'll be international um, scholarship dealing with COVID. Mm -hmm. okay. Thanks so much for, for your research and for uh, giving your time today, and uh, viewers, watch for the next episode of What's a Preacher to Do? Thanks.